Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flat Iron Studio Question of the Week. This week we want to talk about intercoolers and the difference between top mount and front mount. Uh, I guess let's start with, what does an intercooler do? Basically for all the modern tubers, it's an air-to-air -air intercooler, which means it's using outside air to go through the intercooler to cool off the intake charge that's running through the middle of the intercooler uh, for the engine. If, if we're trying to make power, or if we're trying to keep the engine running, we need to burn air. We need usable air, usable oxygen in the cylinder so that we can burn fuel. The hotter an air intake charge is, the, least, the less dense it is. So the less oxygen, less usable air there is in that intake charge. So we want to keep it cool so that it's as dense as possible. And, and, and I should say too, like with a turbocharger when you're making boost pressure, when you're compressing a gas, you're always going to be heating the gas up. The hotter an intake charge is, the more likely you are to run into issues with pre-ignition pre or detonation. And, and a big re reason for that is uh, when, when you get that intake charge into the cylinder, then the cylinder is going to seal off and then you're going to compress that before the spark fires to, to actually turn, burn the air and fuel mixture together. This is what's referred to as compression ratio. And again, you know, as a gas is compressed, it's going to get hotter. Well, the hotter you start with, the hotter temperatures of the gas you start with, the hotter it's going to be once it's fully compressed at top dead center when you're trying to actually use it to make power. Okay, so let's talk about top mounts. Sure. Uh, what are some pros and cons? The, the pros to a top mounted intercooler is uh, really compact packaging um, and you have really small plumbing. So uh, in the case of a Subaru, the turbo is just a couple of inches from the intercooler core. The intercooler generally just goes right into the throttle body so all of your plumbing is as small as and compact as possible and that gives you good good response and, and oh, generally speaking a wider power band. The, dra the biggest drawback is that um, it's an air to air intercooler so it only can work as well as you can get air going over it. So since it's in the engine bay and it's underneath the hood you have to duct outside air in and, and through the intercooler. So the amount of air that you can, can duct it is limited by how big of an opening you, you've put in, like in the case of a Subaru, in the hood, to grab clean outside air and send it through the intercooler. STIs generally have larger scoops than WRXs do, like the Legacy GT was notorious for having a really thin uh, opening in the hood, which really limits the amount of air getting to the intercooler, which really limits the intercooler's efficiency. Then there's also something called heat soak, which you probably have heard about, and that's because the intercooler is sitting on top of the engine. Now, when the car is moving and you've got a lot of air flowing through the intercooler, it's not really much of an issue. But when you come to a stop and there's no air movement over the intercooler, especially on a hot summer day, if the, if the engine bay is hot, the intercooler is going to be hot. So you're going to have to get the car moving, get air moving over the intercooler to cool the body of the intercooler down just so it can really start doing its job more efficiently. In terms of power, like it is possible to overrun a top mount's capability. So if you're trying to make a lot of power, if you're trying to make a lot of boost pressure, especially a lot of boost pressure, it, it's, it's very possible that, that uh, you could be heating up the intake charge to the point where the time out of the intercooler just can't keep up and cannot sufficiently cool it down. So before we move to a front mount, uh, there's a thing called a verticooler. Yeah. Um, does that solve any of these issues? It's, it's a really interesting idea. Um, so with the time out of the intercooler, with, with all the Subarus, they generally are sitting pretty flat in the engine base. So all of that air that's coming in through the hood has to then make a pretty steep turn to be facing to the point where it can actually go through the intercooler and do its job. What the guys at Process West figured out is, well, what if we took the intercooler and kind of like the idea of a front mount where it's forward facing and you have like a real, it's easy for the air to flow straight through it, and we just took that and put it on top of the engine. And then with the scoop that you have, now the air is pretty much going straight through the intercooler so it's a little bit more efficient. If you want to get the most power out of a time added intercooler, the vertical is probably a really solid choice to do that with their ducting as well. So like they have really good ducting, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an efficient design, it's definitely something to consider. So let's move to the front mount. Um, what are some pros and cons with the front mount? Generally, there are much larger cores than the time mounts. You have a lot more space up front of the car, so you can use a much larger core. It's sitting at, at the front of the car, so you don't have to worry about the engine bay heating it up at all. And it, it's right up front, so all of that 
cool air that, that you're driving through can go straight through the intercooler, so that's a big benefit. The problem is you're taking the intercooler from the top of the engine bay and you're moving it all the way down and up front of the car, but the turbo and the throttle body are still back, at, you know, basically on top of your engine. So you have to put plumbing in to go from the turbo all the way out to the front mount and then all the way back to the throttle body. So plumbing plus the much larger core means that there's a much, a huge increase in volume that the turbo has to pressurize to get that air back to the throttle body so you can actually get it in the engine and use it. So front mounts generally have a little bit of a penalty when it comes to, to lag. It's gonna take longer, that the, you're gonna to have to have more engine RPM to get the turbo to spool up because it just has to pressurize such a, a larger volume. Um, and, and for that too, you need a larger turbo that can flow a higher volume of air to really be able to make use of a front mounted intercooler. Like way back in the day on, on the two liter WRXs, they had a very small turbo and you could put a front mount on, but you really didn't get much of a benefit except for on a really hot day because that tiny little turbo just had to work so hard to pressurize this really big volume to get air back into the engine. Without a front mount or the top mount, you have basically cleaner going through your radiator. When you have a front mounted intercooler, you have this big obstruction that you're not putting in front of the radiator. So especially on hot days or hot track days or when you're making a lot of boost pressure, you, you really want to keep an eye on coolant temps because that big front mount core can make it so that the cooling system um, get, is a lot more stressed in your car or, or has issues. So if I'm trying to decide between the two, top mount and front mount, sounds like there might be a bit of a crossover point. There, there really is, and it's, it's, I'd say it's about 400 horsepower. Um, if your goal is 400 horsepower at a max or less, um, and you really want a uh, really good throttle response, if you want the, the widest possible power band as possible, the top mount is a little bit better there because it just keeps all the plumbing really, really tight, really compact and you're gonna get really good throttle response and that sort of thing. If you really want to make more than 400 horsepower or uh, peak power is more of your concern, that's where you really kind of have to go with that front mounted core because you really just need that big core, the better cooling that you get from putting the front mount core all the way up front of the car, just to be able to make that power reliable. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for catching the question of the week. Remember, you can submit your questions via the comments below or Instagram direct messages. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate it. And as always, stay tuned with Flyrings 2.